네, 안녕하세요. 모델 한현민입니다. 장탁빈입니다. 네. 청취자 여러분들 안녕하세요. 저는 모델 한현민입니다. 반갑습니다. Hi everyone, it's Adiola. Welcome to my channel. Han Hyunmin is South Korea's first African Korean model. This is his story. Hyunmin was born on May 19, 2001, in Haebangchon, Seoul, South Korea, to his Korean mother, Han Haejin, and Nigerian father, Awe Tyrus. His parents had met while working at a trading company, and the rest was history. Raised in Itaewon, Hyunmin lived a mostly happy life with his parents, until he entered the school system. Starting from preschool, he was bullied and alienated due to his skin color. Mothers would pull their kids away from him on the playground, telling them, don't play with him. If you play with him, you'll become darker too. Kids would tease him, telling him things like, hey, no one can see you when it gets dark. They would ask him what color he bled, called him broccoli to make fun of his hair, and even compared him to Michael from Dooley the Little Dinosaur. If you've seen my previous videos, you already know Michael is a Korean cartoon character that has been called out for being a racist blackface caricature and is often replicated with blackface on Korean variety shows. Hyunmin especially hated being stared at. This not only happened on the streets, but also during field trips where kids from other schools would stare at him. Hyunmin just wanted to blend in and live a normal life. He would ask himself, am I some kind of mutation? Things were so bad, he just wanted to hide in a rat hole to escape it all. These issues continued as Hyunmin started attending Bukwon Elementary School. He recounted how one time, the teacher was assigning partners and the girl who got assigned to him literally started crying. Due to the constant discrimination and incessant bullying, Hyunmin became violent and started fighting in school. He was having such a hard time and his mom was so sad. She said every day felt like hell. Every single day at work, she would get calls from his school, so many that it got to the point where she wanted to block them as spam. She explained how one time, in front of all the kids, a teacher said Hyunmin should be sent to an alternative school since he couldn't adjust. It was awful. This situation, without a doubt, took a huge toll on Hyunmin's mental health. After telling his mom in first grade that he felt like there was a spider inside his body, he started receiving treatment for depression. He dealt with discrimination outside of school as well. One time, him and his friend were at a grocery store together. His friend stole bread from the store, and when the owner noticed the theft, instead of accusing Hyunmin's friend, Hyunmin was said to be the culprit. Because he was black, it was assumed that he must have been the thief. Incidents like this happened often. Hyunmin's mom worried about how this would affect him. When they would walk in the streets together outside of Itaewon, everyone would stare and murmur, it's a black kid. She felt sorry that her child had to encounter this tough world so early in his life. She would tell him, you are special and one day something great will happen to you. And Hyunmin found that comforting. He also had some friends in Itaewon who were half Korean like him, which helped a little. As for school, things didn't start looking up until third grade. Hyunmin met his new teacher, Lee Young Ki, and suddenly Hyunmin's mom stopped receiving calls from the school. Miss Lee was the first teacher to treat Hyunmin the same way as the other students, without prejudice. He felt it clearly and was grateful for it. Hyunmin's mom was grateful as well as she felt her son had finally found stability. Miss Lee was a lifesaver to them. Things got better from there to the point where Hyunmin was elected unanimously for class president in 6th grade. With school being less traumatic, he was able to pursue his passion for baseball. He wanted to become a professional player. A dream Miss Lee also supported. Unfortunately, baseball was an expensive sport for him to play. With him having four younger siblings, the financial costs were too much for the family, and he had to quit once he started middle school. But there was still much ahead of him. Hyunmin's interest in fashion peaked around the same time. He knew someone two grades above him who had started working for a modeling agency, and he was interested. Realizing he was tall enough for the job, he decided he wanted to become a model too. Hyunmin did what he could to get his foot in the door, teaching himself how to walk from YouTube videos and working as a fit model. He was conned a lot as a fit model, with people promising him auditions that never came. One day, Hyunmin posted a photo on Instagram. A modeling agency CEO happened to see the post and contacted him. 
They agreed to have a meeting in Itaewon at Holly's coffee shop. At the meeting, the CEO asked Hyunmin to walk for him right there on the street. After seeing him walk, the CEO wanted Hyunmin to sign a contract immediately. He told Hyunmin that if he worked with him, he'd put him in a fashion show. Despite Hyunmin's past bad experiences, the CEO gave him faith and he was convinced enough to sign the contract. From then on, the CEO, whose name is Yoon Bum, became Hyunmin's agent at SF Entertainment. Hyunmin was still dealing with issues of discrimination in his day-to-day -day life. When he would take the subway or go to public places, people would stare at him, which he found unpleasant and scary. But as a result of modeling, he was learning to turn the attention he got from his appearance into a strength rather than a weakness. He received some training from his agency on how to walk, and less than two weeks after signing, he auditioned for designer Hang San Hyuk's HSH fashion show. Mr. Hyuk liked Hyunmin and decided to cast him. At the age of 15, Hyunmin debuted at the 2016 Seoul Fashion Week as South Korea's first African Korean model, opening the HSH show. From there on, Hyunmin was in high demand, booking show after show and campaign after campaign, even landing Nike and Hyundai. Live loud. It wasn't all rainbows though, as Hyunmin did receive some rejections due to his race. His favorite fashion designer refused to cast him for a show, saying that he did not hire black people. Other designers, brands, and magazines also wouldn't work with Hyunmin because of his skin color, some even saying he was bad luck and that his agent should recruit white people instead. Hyunmin has never shied away from sharing his experiences with anti-blackness in Korea. He once said, People say wow when people are half white. But when someone is half black, they say, you must have it pretty tough. It is no secret that white people are put on a pedestal in South Korea. Even Hyunmin's agent has spoken up about this issue. Yoon told AFP News in regards to designers and magazine editors. Some of them told me, we don't do dark skin models, or for us, non-Korean models mean white models with blue eyes and blonde hair. <laughs> This didn't stop Hyunmin though. He continued to thrive, being named one of Time's 30 most influential teenagers in 2017, carrying the torch at the 2018 PyeongChang Olympic Games and named in Forbes 2019 30 Under 30 Asia list. Korea's Ministry of Gender Equality and Family also named him as an honorary ambassador to promote awareness of multiculturalism in the country. Hyunmin hopes to get rid of the prejudice against biracial youths and professionals that is still very much prevalent today. He also wants to inspire multiracial kids to believe in themselves and that they can achieve their dreams if they work hard. Hyunmin has continued to stay booked and busy working as a host, guest, and actor in a multitude of variety shows, dramas, and music videos. Traveling abroad for work, he noticed how differently he was treated in other countries and continents. He said, in Europe, they didn't look at me twice. They just passed by. There were people on the streets who resembled me. It was a kind of feeling I had never felt before in my life. He's also mentioned that he'd like to do more work in Japan, where he doesn't get stared at like he does in Korea. Last year, he got to reunite with his third grade teacher, Miss Lee. In this happy, tear-filled reunification, Miss Lee said she never forgot about Hyunmin and that she watches all the programs he's on. Over video call, Hyunmin's mom thanked Miss Lee, saying that if it wasn't for her, Hyunmin might not have graduated elementary school. 
She hopes to meet her again one day. Through his fashion career, Hyunmin went from seeing his appearance as a drawback to feeling empowered by his ability to stand out. With aspirations to eventually start his own clothing line, he has no plans on stopping. It's only up from here.